He's done that. That man can sleep anywhere. At any well, that's because he don't sleep at night. Yeah, so like... He works all night. All of a sudden, like, I remember I used to ride with him in the vehicle. He could just, like, not sleep all night, and then we drive with you, but he can sleep, like, whole body prone and up, just kind of like this. Oh, he does that all the time. Yeah, that's, really that's, good. Not good. that's not good for about your window. neck. Or anything else that's out there. One lady shot up. see you all. Oh, uh, today's service is about new beginnings, and I'm actually I'm really glad I get to chat with you all today about times in our life when things seem to totally start over again. Uh, sometimes we move, sometimes it's sad stuff, so people go through divorces, people change. I mean, it, this is one of those changes, they seem to happen overnight. We change our situation, our lives, and I want to talk to you today about... <laughs> Right. Did you miss that fly, we're going to say? We are, we are sort of attacked today. I thought uh, he was having a seizure for that. <laughs> she reminded me of Walker, because Walker was sitting on my lap. That's Sean's dog I'm yep. babysitting. All of a sudden, he's going like this, and he's trying to catch a fly with his mouth. And I'm going, did you catch it? <laughs> and he goes. <laughs> Everybody's babysitting the dog. We're babysitting the dog, too. Oh, that's good. Got my awesome. cat going nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a friend. Huh? He's a friend. He's a friend. Alrighty. Alright, so there's song, Sweet Low, Sweet Cherry. Too. We did. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, Cassie, nice work. 
Thank you, Kathy. A third of them were Tadwalds. <laughs> Either right. way, but anything else coming up that I gotta let you know about? September. September is right around the corner. <laughs> and really, yep, mm, no doubt about it. All right, sounds good. Take a moment. Say, oh, celebrations, birthdays, anniversaries, etc. Anything of that nature, I gotta celebrate for you. Then shout around, sit around, and wave to your neighbors and family and all that good stuff. Hi. Hi.
So, and sometimes this happens when we move. Sometimes it happens when things really change radically. And I have a favor to ask you then. Matter of fact, I have a favor to ask a few of you. Uh, some of you have seen a couple of these before, but not all. All these critters I'm going to show you have moved very recently from Winona. And they've come from Winona in a special place called a storage shed. And have come up to here to live with me. And they need friends too. Because when you move somewhere new, you need someone to be a friend. So, this panda is new to town. And I want you to show him around and be a good friend. Ron! Oh, you get Pig Pig. Pig Pig's new to town. Oh, he lived in Winona for a while there. And I went, <laughs> I, can you be a friend and show him around at least for the service? Just I can on, be a friend. There you go. You can. All right. Sounds good. Patty! Yo! While technically a farm animal, this is a friend <laughs> who I want to, so I want you to be kind, but not eat it, okay? Mm. No, you have to cook it first. No. Nope. <laughs> Shh. Mint sauce. Be quiet, all of you. <laughs> I'll, 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 keep it for, I'll keep it for a week. <laughs> that would be great. All right. Mary Lou just moved from Winona and is new in town. Can you kind of feel? Don't eat that. No He's a teddy bear. I don't eat teddy bears. And I have one more because he does not want to be left out. Oh. Dave. And again, the rule with lambs are the same. You got to show them around. You can't eat them. Okay, I won't have problems. No <laughs> mint sauce. I don't know. Janina, she would curry it. Right? Uh, that's my sheets, lamb. Curry, curry lamb. Well, I don't want have it. I don't <laughs> want to need to be left yeah, out here. Never so. eat it. <laughs> I got the perfect one for Dave, so you can oh. watch this. Now, this one would rather go fishing, but still needs a friend. <laughs> Hear the good news, brothers and sisters. We are reminded over and over again in our Bibles of God's forgiveness. 
forgiving love for us. Matthew 6, 12 reminds us, forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. they're doing the right thing and just clashing like sin. I mean, it, we need to keep those in our prayers. I'm so. glad we live in Fountain City. Yeah. <laughs> Fountain City does feel a little, but let's keep all those in our prayers. A lot of hurting going on uh, between natural disasters and our own internal strifes. Let us keep in our prayers. There's a lot going on there. A lot. And uh, certainly a little bit of uh, kindness and love, but also listening and understanding. Some people are hurt for very good reasons. Well, if anybody needs anybody to talk to, I'll give you my number. You can call me. Even if I'm at dialysis, I'll talk to you if I'm not sleeping. Oh, good. I need a therapist. <laughs> and, and even if she is sleeping, she may mumble a little. So yeah, yeah, good. I'll answer my phone anyways. Thank you, Patty. You're welcome. Also, <coughs> keep your eyes open. We do have a church prayer chain uh, on the, uh, Facebook. I know uh, very specifically Andrea Peterson asked us to pray for a couple of those very close to her. And... Uh, Please keep your minds open that. When I see your next, I'll ask for the latest on those. But uh, let's keep them all in our prayers. I do know that the one that she, the first one she asked us yeah. to pray for, last week she told me that he got his test back and it wasn't good. Okay. Oh. So he might be battling cancer. Liver. Liver. All right. Let us keep them in our prayers. We don't know a thing for certain yet, <laughs> but uh, obviously, uh, yeah, some very special. You have a family member too. What's Dale? Brother. Brother. Again. Well, Joan's doing good. She, she, they, they got her off the, uh, off the respirator and off the oxygen, and she's out and, and walking around with, oh. a, with a physical therapist. And she's gonna go to rehab. She had a hip replacement, and then she had a problem breathing afterwards. Okay. So, okay. yeah, telling you great because you okay. didn't know you weren't here. Yeah, no, I appreciate. Yeah, she's she's up and doing. I talked to her yesterday, and she's. Upbeat and walking around, she's ready to go home, but That's she's amazing. a long way from that. But you know, she's going to get Have you and Rick, your health been holding up? 
I'm sorry, what? Have you, has your and Rick's health been open up? Yeah, up mine, during mine's, this? mine's good. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, I just, uh, uh, yesterday, no, Thursday, contacted Social Security. I'm going to try and maybe do a little schooling and then try to slowly get myself back to work. Uh, oh. You know, I'm, I'm doing physical therapy myself for my back uh, twice a week. And I'm, I'm up and walking around now pretty good. So, you know, trying to get at least 10 minutes a day walking. You know. yeah. It's tough though. The, the surgery that they did on me was really rough, you okay. know. But, uh, yeah, I'm coming along. Thanks Good. for asking. Well, we pray for you. Thank mm -hmm. you. I remember uh, in the book of Numbers, I kind of like this. Our ancestors settled in Egypt and lived there a long time. But later, the Egyptians were cruel to us. When we begged the Lord for help, he answered our prayer and brought us out of that land. Prayer is not only powerful, but the knowledge that people are praying. <laughs> see him, please let your brother know that we're thinking about him as well. Okay. Plan to see him sometime tonight. Sometime they're coming back. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Well, let's pray. Oh God, for those in our midst, our families, our friends, who are having a difficult time, we ask that you reach out with your love and care. But help us also to let them know that they're not alone, that they are loved, and that we are in this midst. Truly, when something difficult affects one of us, it affects all of us. Help us also to reach out for the beautiful and wonderful things around us in this world. To see your beauty, your care, and your love in every tree and flower. And help us not to take it all for granted. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to love and to forgive, we lift up our heartfelt prayers to you. Amen. And now, as children of God, let us pray that Jesus taught to us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I love this too. So a day like today. This is a day of new beginnings. So uh, I rather like this tune. So uh, please feel free to sing along.
Don't you see it? I have put roads in desert, and streams in thirsty lands. And every wild animal honors me, even jackals and owls. I will provide water in deserts, streams in thirsty lands for my chosen people. I have made them my own nation, so they would praise me. These are words of hope in a difficult time, and reminding them that something new is happening. And I'd like to talk to you later today about what happens in our lives when things change. And how can we, in the midst of the scariness of change, find really good stuff and new beginnings? Um, let's sing a song that's, uh, I've uh, played it a couple times. It means a lot to me. Say no. Two boats so full 
But they both began to sing. And when Simon Peter saw this happen, he knelt down in front of Jesus and said, Lord, don't come near me, I am a sinner. Peter and everyone with him were completely surprised at all the fish they had caught. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were surprised as well. But Jesus told Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will bring in people instead of fish. And the men pulled their boats to the shore, and they left everything and went with Jesus. Sometimes in our lives, we just feel like we're not the same people anymore. Things have changed. Some of us go through life-changing events. A new job, we might go through a divorce, new relationships, we move, we change locations. We have to start over again, as the phrase goes, make new friends, do things differently. These are new beginnings. I tend to think about this when, when school gets going, and especially this year. I mean... Always there's a sense of things starting over again when school starts up again. But this year it seems uh, even more start-up-ish and more, more that things have changed. I mean, I can't help wonder what it's like for parents who are sending kids off to school wondering what school really is going to look like this year. How many days are they going to be there? How many days are they going to be home? And what will that look like months and months from now? But we all go through moments when our lives are completely turned upside down and completely different. One of the challenges of those moments is to get through some of the nervousness and panic and to see new opportunities, new possibilities, new ways to see the joy around us and to see the good things that God is giving us, even in the midst of all this change. And people deal with change differently. Some people are really good with change. I'm horrible at it. <laughs> As a creature of habit, I, I, I tend to get used to it. Some people get bored with you know, saying things like it. And so when I move or when things change, I, I can get very uncertain about stuff. But it's a process we all go through to work with change, work with things being different, and then be able to see the good things that God is doing with us and through us at this time. And that's why I asked you to focus on Simon Peter. And yes, we question the same person. He's called, as a matter of fact, even in this verse, he's called Simon and called Peter. A slight confusion for the biblical writer because he starts out being Simon. That's the name his mother gave him. And uh, he's known as Simon. But later Jesus changes his name to Peter. Peter. Why did he do that? What? Why did he do that? Ah! Peter in ancient Greek means rock. He literally said, I will call you Peter from now on, for this you will be the rock upon which I build my church. We're very interesting. If you know ancient Hebrew or Greek, the names actually mean something. Uh, sort of like uh, Native American names. If you remember, they, they, they were Native Americans all named their children after things going on in the world or things they noticed. Well, our names seem a little more random. Um, so, but if you know ancient languages, uh, the names of uh, Old Testament and New Testament characters are actually meaningful. And sometimes their names, sometimes their lives can change so much that they change their name to comment. Um, if you know the Apostle Paul, he was originally called Saul, and when he became a, when he found Jesus and became a Christian, he changed his name because he felt his life had changed so much that his name needed to change with it. So, so that's the, hence the confusion with Simon Peter. By the time they wrote this document down, this is the story of Jesus' life, he was known as Peter, but they remembered that he was originally called Simon. So, but he's the most interesting character for me in this moment right now because he's the one who woke up that morning and fishing. Then he went out that night and he fished all night and didn't catch much, but he gets some good days and bad days. And he's getting his stuff, he's pulling his nets. He's cleaning up after a good night's work. And Jesus is talking to people, and there's a number of gathering to hear what he has to say. And he asks Simon at the time to row out a little from uh, the shore. And so uh, the idea is, and, and there's some nice pictures of this, <clears throat> the, so there are areas around this lake where um, it's fairly, like, not steep, steep, but it, here's the water, and it rises up out of there. And so, it's really easy for people to kind of gather. And if you're in a boat, <clears throat> you can kind of gather, and it raises just like a perfect little amphitheater or auditorium or something like that. So Jesus was in a great spot to sit in the boat and chat with people, and, you know, with a little volume, they could hear you pretty well, and they could also see you very well. So all that went well until afterwards, Jesus says, all right, you know, go out, row a little bit, throw your nets over. Now, now Simon is trying to be polite. You can see this. this is a, and he's, he's giving a 
if Simon is being all the master, we have worked hard all night and we have not caught a thing. I mean, it was not, he could have said, look, pal, I let you sit on my boat, but, you know, this, this ride's over here. No, I'll, if you want, Simon says, I'll give it a try. And you know the story, they pull the net and, and, and everything, so much fish comes in, and, and Simon knows something's up. And something amazing is happening. And so he kneels before Jesus and says, look, don't, don't, don't talk to me. I am a sinner. What, what does that mean? And look, you are a holy person, Jesus, Simon is saying. Don't, don't hang out with me. I'm not a good person. And Jesus says to him, don't worry about it. From now on, you're no longer going to catch fish. But work with me, and we'll catch people. Sort of a turn of phrase. In one of the old translations, it was, you will no longer be a fisherman, but you will be a fisher of men. It's a variation on the translation. So the idea is, Simon's life's going to change a lot, overnight. As a matter of fact, him, Andrew, and James and John all stop what they're doing and just follow Jesus. Their lives, literally, in a moment, change. Radically. So now I'll talk to you about moments in life when your lives change and, and how we deal with it and how we get to the point where we can move past nervousness and fright and often see the good things that God is doing in our lives and see new opportunities. So I'm going to start by asking you a question. When you go through radical change, it could be a, like I said, a divorce, a move, a new job, a, a, a big move like you move place radically or something like that. What do you do to start feeling at home? What do you do to start adjusting? What do you do to deal with all these changes? How do you, what do you do to start making a new place or a new life yours? You've all done it. I know you all well enough. You've moved. You've changed. You've found yourself in, in a radical new situation. How do you adjust? Take one day at a time. Take one day at a time. Patty's got a great idea right there. Sometimes when things seem overwhelming, we simply strive to uh, get through this day. This time. And that's, uh, <coughs> do a little service on that because of the, the wonderful song Patty did. It. And uh, we're going to hopefully get another song here going soon, Patty. And I, we're still debating what song is going to be. Yeah, Greg has to pick it this time. Oh, why do I have to do all the work? You pick. I picked the last one. Fair enough. All right, what the other time? Jane's turn to pick. Jane will have to pick. Is Jane singing along too, or what's the story here? <laughs> yep, she's singing along All too. Right. Well, she's an old choir member, so she's going to... She didn't know that, but she does know. Uh, you would, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just changing on the spot too. On the, well, again, things change on the spot all the time. So how do you, you deal with change, a big change? You've all, at some point or another, radically moved your lives. I know a number of you I know have moved quite a bit. How do you deal with it? What do you do to fit in, to make new friends? I mean, not all of you are as lucky as those stuffed animals. I just assign them friends. How are they behaving? Mary Lou, how's your bear behaving? He's being really nice. Excellent. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. My yeah. lambs keeping track of the bear. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you, Patty, for, uh, yeah. I think you've intimidated the lamb a little bit. You talked a little too much about, you know, grills and mint jelly. And no, that bit. was her back. <laughs> <laughs> handle this like I handled everything else in my life, but 
I don't know who I'm going to actually be once I have everything I've ever hoped and wanted for. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a place of my own and have my own things. And, and, that, and I don't know what that's going to look like. Um, so I kind of do the one day at a time kind of thing too. And I just handed it over to God because he does a way better job than I do with stuff like that. Cassie, you have moved radically. When I met you, I bet you never thought uh, when we were having uh, mole at a, a Mexican restaurant that you would end up moving <coughs> to, uh, uh, like I said, Wisconsin. But, uh, no, I had long-term plans to go to Oregon. Yeah, you did have to, yeah. And that's, by the way, what helped me not feel too guilty about that. Because even on a first date, I didn't think I'd live uh, in Kansas City forever. I just got that feeling that it wasn't really a long-term home. It's funny, guess, you'll never guess what. Your ribs. <laughs> ribs? No, no, no. Not, not, not what I miss now. <laughs> what I missed when I was living in Kansas. I didn't miss ribs. There are ribs everywhere. You can't. Yeah. You'll never guess. It's thing you complain about every winter. Snow. Snow. I miss snow. It was weird. <laughs> so every time I'm in the middle of shoveling it and I'm angry, I'm like, this is what you wanted. <laughs> Cassie, you brought up, okay, well, how did you adjust? And, uh, yeah, me. Something totally different, your own. Well, it, I was just going to say the way I handle times of great stress and anxiety is to keep busy. And as long as I have stuff to do, I'm fine. It's when I run, run out of things to do that I have a mild breakdown and go to my bed for a little bit and then readjust and then go on. But keeping busy is the way I cope. Of keeping a task here and there yeah. keeps your mind off all the, oh my goodness, it, what am I going to do? It those? takes the anxiety out of my thinking. Yeah. Nice. I'll try that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Dave, Janine, you, when did you move to this area? Well, I was born in Monona, but I moved around a little bit, and I liked to move. It was fun. So and some of the things that I would do when I got to do place shopping. soaking up a new atmosphere, so yeah. to speak, and you sort of go here and that, yeah, excellent. Now, now Dave, I'm kind of curious, so I, I've heard how your wife deals with all of this, but uh, when you move to a new space, when things radically change in your world, new jobs, how do you, what makes you start to feel at home? I'm not very good at adjusting to that, because when we moved to, uh, when I wanted to Oklahoma City, I think I drove by our old house, I don't know how many times, I missed it. Because it's kind of a resort town too. There are people coming for the summer, and it's more of a you know people are boating and fishing and. More like living in a park it was for us because we had cookouts. Never did that in a People went that way. Yeah. But David, what about like when you went to Vietnam? You know, well, that's yeah. that's huge. It's scary. It's what it is. Yeah. But I mean. Okay, I'm going to dovetail. Thank you. I mean, the idea is you are a kid, basically, and now yeah. you are in, you maybe you're in a, a situation, a different place, so radically different than anything you knew. How did you, you get through it sanely, I guess? I don't know. You just, I don't know. You hear all these rumors about how bad it is and everything. When you get there, yeah, it is bad. I mean, it is. It lives up to what the from 
from the balcony and stuff when I first got there. I thought, man, is this going to be like the whole year? You know, it was scary. You know, I mean, it's hard to adjust to people dying. You never see people dying otherwise. But yeah, from a farm boy to yeah, Vietnam. I was used to that kind of life. Very hard. I don't, I don't hate this. I didn't hate this. Yeah, but they'll kill you if you don't kill them. Well, that's true. That's that was it. And you're you're talking. I was just this beside the question, but the story that you're talking about here. I have a neighbor that I go fishing with, you know, and uh, we can be sitting there and not catch a thing, and he'll say, "Let's move," you know. I thought, well, he's going to start with the engine, and we're going to, you know, walk the river someplace. You know, we move about 10, 15 feet, and we start catching fish. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> well, it's a, neat, it's a neat fishing story for a number of reasons, and I think uh, the writer here is using uh, something a number of the audience would have known, fishing and the weirdness of fishing that way, to talk about the initial experience with the original disciple, but specifically Simon. In other words, and so there's a little bit of divine miracle in there, but yeah, anyone who's fished knows it doesn't take a whole lot of moving for something oh, radically yeah. different to happen. And, uh, and and there may be a good reason down in the water, but from where we're sitting, it all looks pretty random. And so, yeah. And I think there was, in the story, a sort of miraculous nature. Simon sees it as, as, as miraculous and, and sees something very special. It's so much so that he's willing to, to change his whole life. And, uh, and, and to sort of blindly do something radically new, not knowing what the results were. Not knowing what's going to happen. Mary Lou, I haven't asked you yet, but uh, how do you deal with things radically changed? And I know it's happened because you've talked to me about. I still don't. It's every day I ask myself. Uh huh. I have not adjusted. No. Nope. And I don't know what to do. Fair it's hard. You can call me. Fair enough. Well, but the thing is, I don't know if you will understand unless you've been there. I really don't, because it's... I don't know why I'm here. Mm-hmm. We've talked about that often. And, uh, yes. It's a very difficult question, because I mean, when someone in your church says, Rick, why am I still alive? I mean, it's, we all know that God is working in our lives for certain yes. reasons, leading us to certain places. But the specifics get really tricky even when we're looking at our own lives. I mean, I don't know, half the time I don't know what God is doing with me, and I live here full time inside this head. Never mind what someone else is doing. But one of the big challenges with all of these changes, and I think I'm going to relate this back to what you're talking about, is that we're always looking for the good that God can do through us. Always looking for the blessings that God gives in our lives. And I think sometimes we live in a world that's always looking wrong and, and realize that even in the most difficult or stressful situations God can be leading us to some some wonderful and neat stuff and so the only advice I could ever give you at the time was simply look for the good things around you that God is doing for you though it doesn't always answer the whole question and there may not be a single sentence answer to no. the whole question but and yeah. well the circumstances that are going on in the world right now just make it worse Mm -hmm. because all there is is strife and people fighting and all this stuff and it's just you get tired of hearing about it and you get tired of trying to think of a way to make everybody like each other again Mm -hmm. am i understanding you correctly when you were talking about why am i here and i don't understand that that People have said to me, you know, you're the one that should be afraid of COVID or your, you know, your body's compromised, your immune system, all that kind of stuff. And, and I don't worry about that because it's in God's hands. And I'm I don't worry about it either because if God let me go through what I went through and I'm still alive, right. That's I'm not going to be here. So there yeah. isn't even. Yeah, I know this. Not even think about it. I told Greg that, that a long yeah. time ago, didn't I? Yep, yeah. well, I remember that. God's doing what he wants. So I'm not so scared of the...
so scared of the COVID. My husband is really scared. Mm -hmm. My husband has a really, really, really hard time with change. Even if they don't make the same pair of jeans the same way, he's got to go find new pants. And he doesn't like nothing. Why can't they just make him like a goose? <laughs> It's fair. Um, wow, I got, uh, A, I can sympathize with him. So I understand <laughs> in this context that sounds ridiculous. I am the same way. He has to be, oh, I got some pants. And like, I'm like, these are an inch longer than the other ones. And I'm like, Greg, you shouldn't care. And yet, there it is. And just, and sometimes, for me at least, and I don't know where your husband's coming from on that, for me, um, when things are chaotic and everything is changing, I hold on to a couple things close to me that are the same. Like, like, and, and, and I get oddly annoyed, like, yeah, but they make those pants different now. <laughs> well, I, this, my brother, my sister-in-law told me, he's got clothes from high school. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're broken in. <laughs> they're comfortable. Yeah, they're comfortable. Well, but after 25, this was like 25 years of marriage, she goes, he's still got his high school clothes. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. How, how many pairs of the same sneakers have you bought? All right, this is a weird thing. <laughs> and they don't make them all the time. The sneakers change a lot. I have, yeah. Okay, so you know at Rogan's, right? When you buy one, you can get one at uh, yeah. half price. Yeah, so I have been known in my odd, because that's a, the little things I like being the same. It makes me feel secure. So I have walked out with like four pairs of the same sneakers. Of the exact same size. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're not so strange, Pastor Greg. I do the same thing. And like, I know now for the next few years. Uh, so and then he'll forget he has a new pair and go buy more. Because <laughs> if I can find him again, so I come back like with a new pair. Now it's Rogan, so I get two new pairs. And she's like, you know, you already have two in the closet. <laughs> but darn it, I like those shoes that way. But, and this is. I mean, for me, this is all part of the, the dealing with, with change and, and maybe my own little way of fighting back against lots of change or just holding on to a little something. But for me, um, it is about um, a way to deal with a lot of stress that comes in radical change. I, I feel for Simon, though, he never complains here. I mean, one day he's a fisherman. And that's a certain life. You get up, you take care of your nets, or you go, at night you go out, and there's a rhythm, there's a Walking around following Jesus as he preaches was radically different. And I, I always wondered, I always wondered, and never really talks about this in the scriptures, but was Simon ever particularly scared at those changes or those things? On the other hand, you may not have known because Simon was, uh, Simon, what's that uh, phrase, uh, all bark and no bite? Simon could very quickly say how much he was going to be the greatest disciple ever for Jesus. But then kind of let him down. With, uh, I mean, Simon, this is the same Simon Peter that uh, uh, that night after Jesus arrested denies knowing Jesus three times when asked. It's one of those, but just before he promised Jesus, oh no, I'll never do it. So he's got a lot of bluster. But sometimes when the rubber meets the road, it's a little difficult for him to keep up with the promises he made, with the, with the almost bragging that he had done. So, so interesting. So, well, yeah, thank you. I'm glad I'm not the only one. I feel a, a little You guys have the same size, maybe you can just change. No, no, I have like a very specific thing. And very specific. I actually deal with that all the time at work because people will want uh, appliances or things very similar to what they had when, you know, like 10 years ago or something like that. And yeah, and that gets right there, and it just is not going to happen. It's hard to learn how to set timers and set stuff on them. Yeah. And if you're used to a certain oven, it's you miss it. <laughs> yeah, but the new stuff is so nice. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I like new clothes. I don't yeah. want to wear the same old thing over and over and over. Yep. I have a little, oh, what a great point with a, so I have a little pile, a little list of uh, appliances of all the ilks that are completely stripped down for the people who see it in their eyes. They're like, oh my god, they want this thing has got all these little knobs and bells and whistles, and I want none of it. And 
have a little list in my head of the simplest stuff. But they're not like you, Jeannie. Jeannie loves this stuff. <laughs> Jeannie's like, oh my goodness, look what this thing does. And yeah, but it is a matter of whether we can deal with change and see the good that comes out of it. And this is one thing I get. When I move, I don't want to just harp on the fact that I'm always nervous when I move or when things change. At the end, when I do adjust, when they, good things can really come out of that. But we have to open ourselves up to it. And we have to sort of see more clearly and just kind of realize the wonderful opportunities that came with that change. And, and while I'm sympathetic when, when it's difficult, to, I don't want to leave you on the note of, oh my goodness, change is so painful and difficult. I really do want to leave you on the, when you get through the nervousness and the pain, there are wonderful, wonderful new opportunities. And it happened for Simon. Simon changes his life, he follows Jesus, but he sees things he never would have seen. He experiences things he never would have experienced had he just been a fisherman. Had he seen bottles? He might have. There were points I think that he very much loved it. And uh, I would not, uh, I, would, you know, I, would, I would very much uh, agree with you on that. But it took that leap of faith. No, I'm going to raise on when we sing. All right, other thoughts, ideas, things like that before we go into a, a song that you all know and love and will sing along with me. Oh, you look very deep in thought there. there well, that, so. well, this, my husband, I, I, I know said how he is. Yeah. He's had a flip phone for years and years and years. Oh, the flip phone. God bless him. Um, well, flip phones are not for G. <laughs> <laughs> is a good thing. So he, he, had, he had to get a smartphone. Okay. My God, I can't rip it out of his hand. So, oh, no, he got rid of it. <laughs> so he went through, this is a great metaphor. So he got rid of the flip phone and he's got this nice smartphone and he got through the nervousness of just, but now, now it's his best friend? Yeah. <laughs> he likes it. What a he's great playing story. with it. Yep. I, and it doesn't make sense to me because he, I'll never, never, ever will I get one of those. That yep. is so stupid. People sit there playing on their phones for hours at a time. He was going on and on and on. And now you go look at him and he's on the couch. <laughs> well, you know, I have a, I have a phone. It's a smartphone. Uh, and I bought it eight years ago. And I still have the phone. And, and the carrier that I use, Straight Talk, sent me a text saying, I have to get a new phone by 2021. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm literally scared to death. Because, uh, it took me eight years to learn how to work the one I got. You know? And uh, I, I don't want to have to start over again. But, you know, if I want to continue to talk to people or whatever, I guess I have to. I don't have a choice. Yeah, because yeah, you know? he went to 4G, and now they're going to be 5G, so he's not going to get to keep his phone. And he's only had it a month. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it. This is like getting through the difficult spot to the point where amazing things happen. Be it 5G or be it God working through our lives in neat ways. And I do wish you the best of luck. Go. Eight years you've had this thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are. Yeah, you people will be I'll shocked. I'll have Ryland come over and teach you how. Ryland can in a few minutes, too. So. <laughs> well, I told him because he was asking me, and I said, call Kayla. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the kids yeah. can do it like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Kayla, oh, oh, yeah. Kayla loves electronics. And she could teach Grandpa a lot. <laughs> <laughs> With that thought in mind, I'm going to ask you to sing our final song together. We can chat about this afterwards if you want. But a uh, uh, song we sang with before, and I adore the song in its need. You've heard it on the radio and all that. But it is a song about getting through something difficult, getting through changes, and seeing all the wonderful things that could happen. And like I said, this applies to smartphones and our walk with God all the same time. So I'm going to ask you to sing with me. Uh, I can see clearly that I really like this too. I like playing it with you and it's kind of fun. And then, uh, thanks a lot guys. It was a, a neat conversation. Okay. Then one on the fall. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, by the way, our animals that have moved, that are changing, that are just, are they all acting okay for you? Yeah. He was pretty scared there. when he heard about the grill. <laughs> <laughs> he said to hold on to him tight. Well, again, no well, grills. No. I understand. I see him getting nervous there. I appreciate your love and support. Yeah, he would be not so good either because she was talking.
about a hog roast. Yeah. 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 Gotta be more sensitive of these things. Before we had the hog. <laughs> no talk of pig roast, no talk of mint sauce, okay? <laughs> Here we go.